Hey there YouTube, AJ here. And I'm back on the hot rod. This time I'm at the front end of it. And uh, I got a bunch of front end parts laid out everywhere. And we're gonna start getting the front end of this thing put together so we can get it dropped onto the ground and make this chassis a roller. Or at least a, the frame a roller. But that's where we're at today. We're gonna start, I have my spring pack that I rebuilt in a previous video. I'm gonna put it into the chassis and then I'm gonna to try to attach my axle to it. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, we'll see. Well, that's not gonna work, is it? Okay, I already have my first problem. I'm not gonna be able to use this with that bolt out like I wanted to. So we gotta get rid of that. someplace we can find them. It's at least partially in there. should be uh, good enough for our purposes right now. We have a spring. We'll take it real quick. Just clean these eyes out a little bit. I'm, I'm gonna be reusing my uh, current bushings for now. Probably should put a little grease on those though. I'll be greasing these for real later, but for now, I'm just going to put a coating on them to help assembly. And if you wonder what I was doing, I'm just using a little brass brush to clean out those holes a little bit. There we go. Originally, I wanted to run my old Model A spring purchase and I was going to just cut off everything up here where the mechanical brake goes and the, the shock mount and just use this. However, I found out that they weren't long enough because of my wishbones I'm using. So I'm running split wishbones. I don't have to. I could have used a regular Model A wishbone unsplit, but I like the look of split wishbones, so I'm making it with split wishbones. Um, I'm using, these are 40 Ford split wishbones, so they're a little different. These wishbones that I'm using are actually, were split a long time ago by someone else. And for now, I'm not cleaning them up or painting them, I'm just using them as is. I'm using them with the uh, giant welded bone here. I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just letting it, I like using the work of some old hot rodder in the past. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna keep going with what he did. But the thing about the 40 wishbones is these bosses, even though the distance here is the same as the Model A, the upper boss and the lower boss are actually a lot thicker than the Model A bosses. So to use these Model A purchase, nothing sticks out for the nut down here. So I could grind them down thinner on both ends, but that kind of does away with one of the key thing I like about these wishbones. Where this spring perch used to be, that's where I plan to put my shock mount. So if I grind these down all thin to where I could use these again, well, I lose my mounting point for my shock. So I had to go with another plan. I actually had to buy a new part. I had to go to Speedway and buy um, some longer spring perches. These will reach all the way through. 
they're actually designed for the lower the kind of nut with the um, lower shock mount on it so but they'll work for this as well so we're just going to go with that and that's what we have now and i just remembered something else they don't have they didn't come with bushings in them so i need to put bushings in them before i can mount the axle all right so you didn't get to see me hunt around forever for this jar that i had sitting right there because i put these spring bushings in it for safekeeping sat it right there with all the parts so it took me a while to find what was right in front of me and i got new ones for the spring as well but for now i'm only going to put them in the bushing i'm not going to put them in the spring and Those are very, very loose. That is not what I expected. Well, that's not right. All right, so we're going to have to stop for now because these bushings that I got are apparently only fit the spring, and I thought I got bushings for the spring and the perch eye but this is too loose for the perch eye so i guess i gotta go figure out what i bought wrong and uh order the correct parts well these look like they would have been the correct size for the original model a spring perches but apparently these, the spring perch for this, is a bigger hole. Uh, Alright, so I guess I got to go look and see if there's a different part for these. Shoot. Okay, well, I had to order my bushings for my spring perches. Sure would have been nice if Speedway had kind of told me I was going to need to do that. Just sucks because, you know, when you try to order stuff, try to order it in batches so you don't have to continuously pay shipping on everything you order separately. Anyway, what I'm going to do is go ahead and start preparing some of these parts for um, assembly. Some of the bores in, in the axle and, um, you know, the spindles and things are a little rusty so you know i want to clean them up i'm going to be using uh, these bottle brushes or bore brushes whatever you want to call them um, this one's steel i'm only going to use the steel on the steel parts and then on some of the other ones like where i clean up with bushings i'll use brass a brass version of this hopefully i can get these cleaned up where the parts will slip together kind of easy this one. That's good. Alright. Those two are good. Now this. Yeah, these are. These have a bushing in them, I think. Can't tell. I think I'm going to use brass on that. That looks like it has a bushing in it. This. This doesn't, so we'll see if this will fit through even. Look like I cleaned it up pretty good. Maybe I need to go through this one again. That one seemed to work a lot easier. Hopefully that'll make these pins work. Wow. That's concerning. Oh, oh there went, that one went. All right. Maybe.
there it goes. Okay, just gonna take a little more effort. All right, can't get it out now. Okay. All right, this sort of went in. Might try to clean those up a little bit more. Okay, now I'll switch to a brass brush. And these brushes come with a, like a, a ring on the end of them. But to put them in my drill, I just squish them flat. And that way I can put them in my drill. All right, so now, I'm going to do the ends of the, uh, where the kingpin goes through. Give her, give her spindles a little bit of a clean as well. Ugh, this one's dirty. Alright, let's see how some kingpins fit through. Well, that's not good. These should definitely drop in easier than that. That's better so far, but not, oh, nope, it sticks. Right. Let's see here. Mm. Wowzers. This is, that's, that's got gooey, sticky stuff in it. All right, so these definitely need more cleaning. These are these have actually got sticky stuff in them, like old dried grease or something. So that definitely needs more cleaning. Wow, what is in those? I mean, that feels and like. Almost like tar. It's just got to be old, dried, crusty grease, I guess. A lot of rust coming out of this one. All right. I think at least on this, I'm going to use the steel wire brush. See if I can't get these ends cleaned up. All right, a lot of rust came out of that. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's the way they should drop in. quite there but it's not bad boom that one's good in there we got out all right so now we get everything assembling into our axle well so that's good we're ready to go there still need to do something about these spindles here these are really gross and nasty
Uh, let's see. Oh, look at that. Now we're cooking. Ta da! Good. Now we should be able to just lightly assemble everything. Ah, oh. all right. So obviously I gotta put the bearing in here and the washer, the, the cup washer and the felt washer that goes on the top. There's a shim that goes in here, I think. So, but yeah, we're a lot closer. I think we'll have all of this. This will go in there. Ah, I guess the one thing I do have to clean out are my ends of this. So we can do that. I mean, I guess I could start assembling my spindles onto the axle. I don't think I want to do that yet because I think it's just going to make it harder to put my axle onto the spring. I, my initial plan was obviously put the spring on, put the axle onto the spring, then assemble my spindles onto the axle, and then assemble my brakes onto the spindle. Rather than building the axle first and then trying to put it onto the frame, it, it would be a lot heavier. And if I go ahead and start doing this, it's gonna be heavy and gonna be difficult to put in here. So I guess I'll just wait till I get these bushings. I don't want to, I wanna get some more done, but I guess this is as far as I'm gonna to get tonight. Okay, well, I just noticed that my kingpins don't go all the way through my spindles. They, you know, come up like a half inch short. So I pulled out an old Model A spindle and compared I guess it's this way but as you can see the model a spindle is quite a bit shorter thickness from boss to boss than the f1 spindles so with the model a spindle being shorter i got two options i can go through the trouble to convert this spindle to the f1 backing plates which is kind of a lot of Kind of a pain. I have to modify my mounting holes on, on the backing plate and get a spacer to go around here. Could be done, I don't know. But I kind of like the heavier, bigger spindles. The other option is to get the longer F1 style uh, kingpin so I can use them with this axle. And I think that's just what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go ahead and order new kingpins for these. You know, I kind of committed to this, so I was thinking about ordering a steering arm for this anyway, so I guess I'll just go ahead and order that steering arm and the kingpins. It's just a pain because, you know, I'm waiting on parts again. I'm still waiting for the bushings on my perch pins, which kind of sucks. I can't get anything done here. And then I was going to go ahead and just go ahead and assemble the axle and just deal with the weight. And, but I can't and then, I, then I find out that I've got the wrong size um, kingpin so I can't even do that ah setbacks 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 oh well what are you gonna do I'll get back with this as soon as I get some parts all right so I still haven't got my bushings for my spring purchase yet bronze online that's where I try to order them from. And uh, it's been almost two weeks now. They finally just replied to me with all my inquiries on when is this going to ship. And they said it should be on the truck this weekend coming in so they can ship it out. So hopefully this week I'll get those. In the meantime, I already got my 
some parts from Speedway. So let's uh, go ahead and open that up. These should be my kingpins, longer kingpins. And this steering arm. So that's cool. Went ahead and bought that combined just because of shipping and you know whatnot. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a. I actually like this look better, but it's kind of the cheaper, cheaper way to go. I don't know. Anyway, it is what it is. I got it. That's my steering arm. That's gonna be my steering arm. And then these, hopefully, are the right size kingpins. Well, they are longer. So anyway, if these are the right sizes. I'm just gonna go ahead and start throwing this axle together. Cause I'm tired of waiting and then I'll have to deal with putting the heavy axle in, getting it to attach to the spring somehow. We're gonna to try to figure it out. Anyway, so I guess first thing we need to do is check our kingpin size. Where is, oh, I guess there. All right, that looks like the right size. Just a little bit sticking out the bottom. Now, as long as as long as long this slot lines up, we're good. All right, let's assemble some parts. So we have these. We have felt washers and a, a cup washer. These go on to the kingpins like a so. I'm gonna put just a light touch of grease on these for now. Get this started. You gotta make sure you line up the groove in here with the hole here. It's not come with bearings. There's the. This kit did come with new bushings as well. I'm not gonna use. I'm gonna use the bushings that are in it right now. They seem to be okay. Got our bearing, to which there's not really any grease in it. So I'm gonna pack the bearing. There's all kinds of videos out there about packing bearings if you don't know how to pack a bearing. But basically you're just smashing grease into the ball race there. They're, they make tools to do this with it, but I don't know. I don't have one and I guess I'm not afraid of getting some grease on my hands, so. Especially new grease. Old grease smells nasty, but this doesn't smell bad. All right, that should be plenty. Now, the fun part. Getting all this to go through nice and straight. Now, there is clearance that they want you to have here. I think it's like 5,000 right now. I think I'm good. It's I will check it later. I will check my clearance and I'll add shims if I need to later. But for now, I can throw it together like this and we'll be fine. Now, hopefully, this will go in and line up in the proper place here, that, that groove. All right, that looks good. So now, we need our pins. I don't know what these are called, lock pins, lock, I don't know. Anyway, basically it's a, it's a special bolt with a tapered pin and a groove 
to go in here and hold everything in place. The Speedway kit did come with a nut and lock washer for those pins, but I like the old style. So I'm gonna use that instead. I took that pin out because it's kind of gouging. I wanted to clean it up a bit. Oh, hell's bells. I put it in from the wrong side. Shit. Okay. Good enough for now. We have one spindle on. I'm probably going to have to readdress all this later when I go to put in the new bushings and all that. But I know you're probably saying, why not go ahead and do it now? The problem is I don't have the special tool to ream these bushings. And I'm going to have to have that done by somebody later. So for now, we're just going to use it as is. So we can get everything rolling around and get this thing all mocked up. So we can build the daggone car. We're going to explode it all apart again anyway. And then we'll deal with all those things. Let's put this one on. Axle is already getting really heavy. Oh, shit. Well, let's go ahead and take those out for Mm. A little bit of grease on this one. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see, but this bushing here is sitting up just a little proud of the surface here, and it's not making and it's making my uh, bearing for the bottom not sit right. So I need to get that pressed in further, and I'm kind of at odds at how to do that right now. I'm going to try to use this stubby little bolt drop it through and hopefully tap it in without deforming it but i also need something long enough to go through here shoot oh, i got it all right took a little extra effort now i'm worried that i got like a lip in there where def maybe it deformed and i won't be able to get the, the kingpin through we'll see but that got it flush, so we're good there now. Okay, I think I need to do a little bit of reaming on that surface. Let's see if we can get rid of it with this little file. It's definitely better. Got a little bit right there I think we need to deal with. See if that'll get it. Right, I think we're good enough there. I think it'll go through with a little persuasion. Meanwhile, let's see if we can try this again. Line up our groove, or at least hopefully. Get this down just a smidge. <laughs> This one goes in a little better. I don't know. Oh, anti seize. Tiny bit of anti seize. All right. Line our groove up. All right, so the, these pins are just a little too big and they're galling. So you can see where the metal is peeling up the off when I try to pound them in. So they're just a little oversized. 
found all of the aftermarket replacement pins seem to be too tight for these axles or for this axle I don't have an original set of pins anymore I would rather have used those but I'm gonna have to go with what I have all right let's try this again a little more anesthes Let's go. Oh yeah, much better. That one's almost all the way in. Alright. That'll do for now. Put the nut on it. Alright, now I really thought that was going to take no time at all, but that took quite a bit of time actually. Well, now I gotta do that again because I forgot to flip the axle again when I, after I took it out. So I put this one in backwards again. I, oh. <sighs> All right, at least it came out easy. Okay, we have the spindles. I guess we go ahead and start putting on the drums. I think we're going to do that down here. Now my front brakes are Ford F1 brakes and I'm not going to go through the same cleanup process as I did on the uh, rears because in general they're not in that bad of shape. Um, I will eventually do that but for right now I'm just going to go ahead and um, mount them up so I can make my, get this thing going and uh, they're, they're in good enough shape for mock-up and I think with just a little bit of work they'll be actually be usable. Um, I do want to clean the backing plates and all that later but right now I'm not. So for now I'm just going to go ahead and start you know just slap them on there and mock them up. First thing to do is take off the nuts. I'm missing one nut. I think that's okay because I should be able to use one from the other side. There we go. One. Since we're not going to be using these top two bolts over here, we can rob Peter and pay Paul. Why aren't we using those two nuts, you ask? I will show you. I can stick this one over this one over here. Over this side, and back to why we don't need those bolts. Because of this. I should paint this first. I have my computer right now. This is why we don't need those top two bolts because this is going to go on this way and that's going to bolt our backing plate on the top. Alright. I hope 
this came with nuts. Come on. Uh, some Axio mallet. Stay. Stay. Alright, let's go a different path here. Let's do the bottom ones first. Not quite there, but good enough for now. All right. Now this. What is that off the front edge? I don't like that. steering arm. Right. Damn it. So this is one of the aggravating things about these hot rods. You buy parts, you kind of expect the nuts to come with this, but they don't. They should at least tell you what size nuts you need. Maybe they're expecting me to reuse these. Wow, this is, this is not going to be fun. All right, let's uh, flip this axle over. Let's see if you can see what I'm dealing with here. So here's what I'm dealing with now. That's the steering arm bolt right there. There is like no room to get a nut in there. Oh, I mean, none. There is nothing there. I mean, this is right up against the shield. Or the shield is right up against this brake cylinder here. I mean, this one, I feel like I, if you cut away the shield, you could put it in there. But this one, wow. I really don't know what I'm going to do here. Like, I can't even turn a bolt in here. This one, I feel like I could bend the shield out some maybe or cut it away. I'm going to have to do some research on that. Damn it. So I'm stuck again. I mean, the only thing I can think of right now is I have to cut out this corner of the shield on both sides put my nut in behind the wheel cylinder this side's not as bad but this the, this side's worse but put my nut in behind the wheel cylinder push the steering arm through and tighten as it comes through oh that's then i mean yeah that's going to be tedious and a pain but right now that is the only thing i can think of i feel like i might be able to deform the wheel the shield on this side enough to where i could get a nut to spin in but not on this side. So what I think I'm gonna do is cut out this corner down here on both this side and this side. Put my nuts in, bring the steering arm in from the back and tighten it and pull the steering arm through. That is not gonna be fun. Okay, so I didn't cut these open like I said I was going to. I kind of just took a piece of steel rod and a hammer and, and flattened this out and gave myself just enough room where the nut will spin on there 
but I mean it's not it's gonna be a bear to get these all the way tight they're tight enough for now for mock-up so I'm gonna go with it for now um, but yeah when I go to finally put these on I'm gonna have to do something different I'm gonna have to make a tool maybe take buy a cheap three-quarter inch wrench and bend it and maybe I can make it work a little better around this spindle um, something's got to be I got to find some way to get those tighter easier but for now it'll work so next up we got to get the um, hub put on just found the missing nut it was underneath the cap <laughs> hopefully I have a spindle nut that'll fit that I think these are model A hopefully they're the same size all right yes they are like I said I don't have a washer I don't think it's really gonna matter for now have a cotter pen we won't even mess with that right now we will put the cap back on for now just to keep I guess I don't know all right there's one let's go over here to the other side and let's put this one on you look at this I got a Silence of the Lamb thing going on here. You see that? It's like a moth, dead moth stuck in there. Ugh, that's kind of gross. All right, let's return to our regular schedule program. crazy yeah I don't know how I don't know how well this is gonna work okay for better or worse I have this much of my axle assembled again yeah and I know it's just for mock-up not everything's tight things need to be redone etc 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 I know that uh, this is just to get me to a point where I can start getting everything fixed, all my mounting points in place and that kind of stuff. It's, you basically have to build the car first and then tear it all apart and then rebuild it. So, so um, as far as I can go until I get these bushings now, again, I know this may have been a mistake to do this. This may make putting this spring onto these 
once I get these bushings in and trying to put the spring together, it may be a nightmare. I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll cross that bridge when I get there. Okay. We got our bushings in finally. Hey, it only took three and a half weeks. I don't know. Whatever it took. It took a long time for me. I got excited. Test fit. Already put one in. So it fits. We're good there. Uh, to install it, all I really did was actually, you know, it's all pretty easy. Um, of course, this one's going to be harder, I guess. Basically, whoa, shit. okay, to install it, I basically just got it started. This one's a little harder to start than the last one was. And there we go. Got it pressed in nice. Let's go get the axle together. All right, so now that we got these bushings pressed in, we're gonna put them on the axle first, and we're gonna take the radius arm and put it on there. All right. We'll just put that on loosely for now while we fit everything. Then we're going to do the same thing over here. All right, now it's the tricky part that I was worried about and the reason I wanted to assemble the axle to these spring perches first. So now I have to raise up the frame high enough to get the um, spring perch U-bolts to go through here. We need to bring the axle back further. Oh no. Alright. Hang on. I had my tie rod just kind of stuck on here. Just to keep the wheels from pulling out, going all crazy. But that's hitting the floor jack, so I can't do use that right now. So let's hopefully we can roll this back now. We can get one on. So we need to get a little higher. Oh, my floor jack's maxed out. Great. Rubber mallet time. Mm. All right. All right. Maybe I should have checked that ahead of time. Oh, these don't want to go through. Okay. So fortunately, I was prepared for this because I knew that the standard model A spring perches, the bushings they sell for those, you needed to ream those to size after you install them, and. Uh, appears that these are going to be the same case. This is a 9 16 hole. The bolt is 9 16 There's just too much interference for them to go through, so I need to ream them out to, to allow for some tolerance there. I already had bought a 14 and a half millimeter bit to do this with for the standard bushing, so just need to do it for these. Okay, now let's see if we can get these things together. Oh, we're close. Oh, yeah, there we go. We got one side. 
Get some nuts started on these. Can we make the other side go? No! Well, that didn't help any. Oh, there we go. Ha. Hey, hey! Okay, so it bounces and it rolls. Now, it doesn't roll well yet because the wheels aren't tied together. I need to get the guts for my tie ride ends to uh, tie this together so I can steer it, kind of. And, uh, but yeah, then I'll be able to roll this thing in and out. So hopefully those will be coming later this week. I don't know, but for now, we have a front axle, we have a spring that bounces. I got to do some things yet. I need to get my spring clamps put on. Um, not a big deal. Uh, when I was putting this thing together, I realized my left brake drum has a right cylinder. And the reason I knew that was the hose is coming out the front and this one's coming out the back. So this is a right wheel cylinder on my left side. Uh, the guts were, I checked, the guts were all left side and this was all right side. So it's not like I got two right side assemblies, but that's gonna be something I'll have to address. I've added it to the punch list. Uh, you got little things like the hardware tightening and nuts and washers and things I don't have on there. It's, that's fine. I, I just add those things to my punch list to fix when I tear it all apart. I'll get a new wheel cylinder for this side and replace that when I do the final cleanup refresh of the uh, brake assemblies and put this all together for the final time. No big deal. I just wired up the uh, radius rods for now to keep them from dragging and keep everything kind of in check. So yeah, we're ready to move on. Uh, so next up, once I get the tie rod in this, guts so I can assemble that to make this a little easier to roll around so I can move both wheels together. Um, I will roll this thing out. I will be digging out the flathead because it's time to start adding some weight to this chassis. We got to add all the weight to it and put the, everything on here so we can uh, figure out where our rear radius rods and our front radius rods are going to mount to. So as soon as I get these parts tied the loose ends up together I will be rolling this thing out, digging out the motor, and we'll start mounting the motor and transmission into this frame. So, progress, we're getting there. So, until then, later YouTube.